What's up students? Today, another review question, and this question has a monkey of mass five kilograms hanging from two vines, A and B, each 10 meters long at rest. And the question is gonna ask us to draw and label all the forces acting on the monkey, and they ask us to not resolve the forces into components. I'll show you what that means. What's the tension on B at rest when the monkey is not swinging? If I were to happen to cut A and the monkey swings down like a pendulum on B, what would the speed be at the lowest point? And what is the tension of B at the lowest point? Guys, this is a classic AP Physics 1 question. It has multiple topics embedded into one question. So we'll dive right into it. First, with A, they want us to draw and label all of the forces acting on the monkey. So if this is the monkey, it has always an FG, so it says draw and label, okay? FG. Guys, do not label that MG. That is the formula for weight, okay? So when they ask you to label forces, make sure there's an F sub something. Okay, so this is FG. The other thing that it has, it has the tension of B. So we have F tension of B, and that's gonna be pulling this object up this way. And then this one over here, we have the force of tension of A. Now we know that these are at some degree angles and they're not on the XY plane. So we know that we need to break these into components if we wanna solve for things. But they ask us here, do not resolve into components. So this right here is just the forces acting on the object. And this is really all that they want. But now when we move past it and we want to look at the tensions that act, we know we're going to need the component. So I'm going to draw the components right on this drawing. We have a component right here, and this is going to be the force of B in the X direction, and it also has a force of B in the Y direction. And I'm going to take this vector, and I can transpose it over to here so that we stay inside of our right triangle. So this is also the F, B, Y, because that's going to help us see that this is the opposite. So we're going to use the sign for that. Where A is going to pull on this object this way in the X direction. So we're going to have the force of A in the X direction. But it also pulls with this same direction as B did. So now we have the force of A in the Y direction. And then also that weight that was still here, FG. Okay, so now when I want to solve for the tension, I can look at this and probably know that I need to set up a system of equations. So first I'm going to look at just the X direction. Now we know that these things are not moving. This object is at rest. So therefore the net force is going to be equal to zero. So if I say that the net force is equal to zero newtons and F net, if I call to the right, positive was FBX uh, minus FAX. Well, if this is equal to zero, I can now say that FB in the X direction is equal to FA in the X direction. Now, how do I solve for this component? Well, we could see that this FB right here is the adjacent to 60 degrees. And I also know B over here, which is the force of the tension. So when I want to solve for components, I'll remind you that if I call A the resultant, AX equals A cosine theta, and AY equals A sine theta, where A, guys, is this resultant in whatever you're dealing with. So I can substitute now in and see that this is the adjacent. So the force of tension on B is going to be equal to the force of B cosine 60 degrees. Not the component, the actual hypotenuse, A. And this one right here is going to be the force of A cosine of 30 degrees. I simplify this further and I see that the force of A cosine 30 degrees over the cosine of 60 degrees. So FB is really going to be 
1.7 FT of A. All right, now this is the first equation in my system of equations. If I look now in the y direction, let me change my color here so we can differentiate. If I look now in my y direction, I see that as opposed to two forces, there's now three. Now F net is still zero because this object is not accelerating, but now I can say F net, if I wanna call up positive, is gonna be F B Y plus F B A, because these two forces are acting in the same direction, minus FG, the weight that's pointing downward. So if I know this is zero, I'm gonna bring FG over just to make my life a little bit simpler, and I'm gonna get FG equals FB in the Y direction plus FA in the Y direction. Now we sub in how we solve for those, and we solve for FG by saying MG. Okay, now the force of B in the Y direction is now gonna be the opposite, so it is gonna be the sine. So we have FB sine of 60 degrees plus FA sine of 30 degrees. But I can take equation one and plug it in right here. So now this is how I'm gonna solve for my system of equations. I can do now MG equals 1.7 FA sine 60 plus FA sine 30 degrees. So now I have only one unknown. If I plug these in, five, I'm gonna use 10 meters per second squared. You guys might use 9.8, it really depends. 1.7 FA sine of 60 degrees plus FA sine of 30 degrees. So 50 equals 1.97 FA. So the force of tension on A is equal to 25 Newtons. Therefore, if I bring this back up into here, I can see that FB is equal to 1.7 times 25, and FB is now equal to 42.5 Newtons. Now for part C, they're gonna say we are going to cut a line here, and then this whole object is gonna swing like a pendulum. So what happened is it started up here like this, and this angle was given as 60 degrees. So what I just drew was this right here, this line and this angle. Now I know when it's at the lowest point down here, it's gonna have a length equal to 10 meters. If I draw a perpendicular here and make this a right angle, I see that this right here is gonna be my delta Y when I wanna find out gravitational potential energy. And that delta Y is going to be 10 meters, the length of the string, minus the sine of 60 times 10. Now where did that 10 come from? The 10 came from here. So if I wanna find out what this length is right here, right, it'll be the opposite of 60 times 10, sine 60 times 10, minus the length is gonna give me just this little piece right here. So delta Y is gonna be equal to 1.34 meters. Now that is a huge part of this step because this problem is asking all about the, the conversion of gravitational potential energy when this thing was at rest at some delta Y, now being converted into kinetic energy to find the fastest speed right here. Because at the bottom of a pendulum, that's when an object is moving its fastest. So if we say mg delta y equals one half mv squared, these m's are the same so they cancel out, we see that the velocity at the bottom of a pendulum is the square root of two g delta y. Okay, so if I plug in now, we have the square root of two 
times 10. I'm going to use 10 meters per second squared because that's what we do in AP. Delta Y we just solved for, 1.34 meters. Okay, so the V is going to be equal to 5.18 meters per second. Now, guys, a little test, a little test taking tip for you. If you knew that you had to do this, but you had no idea how to find this, make it up and get yourself some partial credit. At least show me that you knew that this was going to be the process to solve for the speed. Don't think to yourself, I can't find this, so I'm just not going to do the problem, right? Make up a number, right? Delta Y equals 4. Then I'll take off credit because I don't know how you figure that out, but you'll get credit for all this process and you'll find a speed that you can use in the next part and you'll get full credit on part D. So let's now take a look at that last part D and find the tension of the rope at the lowest point. First at the lowest point, let's look at what's acting on the monkey. It's a pretty good monkey, isn't it? All right, we'll draw some hands and feet on him. We're almost at the end of the problem. Okay, so we have this upward force So we have this upward force of tension, and the monkey has a downward force of Fg. So if we look at F net, I'm going to call up towards the center of the circle, because in a circular motion, the center of the circle is always positive, Ft minus Fg. Now, I just said this object is moving in a circular path, because a pendulum is a portion of a circular path. So we have a fancy name for the net force of an object moving in a circular path, and we call that Fc, centripetal force. So if I know that the centripetal force is now going to be equal to Ft minus Fg, then simply the force of tension is going to be Fc plus Fg. So we solve for Fc by saying mv squared over the length of the rope, R, the radius of the circle, plus mg. Now, this is not like the case up here. You can't cancel these m's out because it would have to be an m over here. So that's a common mistake. These m's do not cancel. We need to plug in. We say 5 times the speed that we just solved for. Do not forget to square that item. I see that happen all the time. Divided by the length of the rope, which was 10 meters. And that is going to be added to 5 times 10 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration due to gravity. I find that the tension on this rope is 63 newtons. Okay? Not a particularly difficult question, but definitely a lot going on. You need a lot of physics knowledge to get this problem correct. But when you look at each one of its parts, we've done all these parts throughout the year. Just work through one thing at a time. Don't start worrying about D before you do A, B, and C. One step at a time, and you'll be just fine.